Hey friends, welcome back to Out of DevOps. Today we're gonna see how VPC service control works. We're gonna start with the basic concept. So in this first video, uh, my goal is to clarify what VPC service control is and uh, also how we can use to protect a simple resource like a project. And then in future videos, we're gonna see uh, more advanced use cases. Before we start, if you're new, my name is Anto and this is Auto DevOps, a YouTube channel where I talk about software engineering, especially about cloud technologies and also soft skills in, um, in uh, software engineering. So without further ado, let's start with the VPC service controls. So before starting with the hands-on uh, part, I want to just uh, show you uh, the initial concept of VPC ESC. So I prepared a few slides. So for this demo of the VPC service controls, I created in uh, Google Cloud uh, two projects called, one is called Red Project and one is called uh, Blue Project. And um, each of them, they have a um, service account. Um, the Red Project has a service account called Blue Inspector because we want to inspect the resources in the Blue Project. And the same uh, is on the Blue Project. So. Uh, we have a red inspector to inspect the resources from the uh, red project um, from the blue project to the to the red project so i also created a couple of resources so um like uh, there, there are two buckets in uh, in each of them there is a, a bucket called um, red gcs in the project red and there is a bucket called blue gcs in the project blue so what we're gonna do we're going to see that this service account um, have permissions to list the bucket in uh, the other project. So, so we're going to see that from the blue project, we can use the red inspector service account to list all the buckets in the red project. And uh, then we're going to see how we can protect these from happening by uh, keeping the same IAM permissions, but creating a perimeter. So we're going to create a perimeter like this one this green rectangle around the project is our perimeter and then we're going to enforce some rules to stop the red in inspector from uh, accessing the uh, resources in the red project and then we're going to see how we can configure the service perimeter to um, protect the project and specifically the storage api from uh, requests coming from outside the project so this is what I've created. I'm going to show you now in the Google Cloud Console, the resources. So as you can see, there is a red project and a blue project. So in the red project, we have a service account, which is the blue inspector. So blue inspector. And the same is on the blue project. We have a service account, which is a red inspector. For each of them, I generated the key and it's already in my console. So um, now we can switch to the terminal and I can show you the permissions that are assigned to these machines. So here, as you can see, there are two terminals, a blue representing the blue project and the red representing the red project. So in each of them, I exported the um, uh, credentials uh, for uh, the service accounts. So uh, in the blue, we authenticate as a red inspector because we want to inspect the red project from the blue and in here we do the same we authenticate as the blue inspector so now what we want to do we want to see if we have access to the um, cloud storage resources so i'm gonna type gcloud and this is how we can inspect the storage from uh, the blue project but we want to change to the red project so we do gcloud storage ls and then we specify the target project which is the red and this should return the list of buckets that um, are in that project let's see and as you can see we can list the uh, bucket in the red project let's try to do the same thing from uh, from here so we want to again list all the buckets uh, from red uh, that are contained in the blue project so we're using the blue inspector and this one also is returning so we have blue gcs so this means we have the right permissions on the service account to inspect the apis and see 
um, the uh, buckets that are in each project. So now let's have a look at the um, perimeter itself. So first of all, where do we create a perimeter? A perimeter is created inside the, it's a, an organization resource. So you must have an organization, otherwise you cannot play with this. So in, um, under the organization, you can look for, under security, you can look for uh, VPC service controls. So now we don't have any perimeter created yet. As you can see, uh, there are two modes. There is a dry run mode and uh, an enforced mode. I'll show you how the um, dry run uh, works and a few, few other things. So now let's start by creating a perimeter. We click on new perimeter and we can call this. So in the previous picture, we wanted to protect, we created the perimeter around the red project. So we're gonna do the same here. We're gonna do red perimeter. And here we have uh, another uh, parameter to set. There are two types of perimeters that we can uh, create is a default perimeter, uh, like a standard perimeter and uh, a perimeter bridge. The perimeter bridge is a special type of perimeter that uh, can allow the communication between two regular perimeters. So now uh, let's go into step two. So here uh, is the place where we define the resources we want to protect. So we can protect two types of resources, the projects and the VPC networks. Uh, the reason why uh, these are separated is because in a project, uh, if we are using shared VPC, we can have multiple um, shared VPCs hosted in the same project. And uh, one rule of the VPC service controls is that a project can only be included in one perimeter. So in that case, we may want to not include the project, but include the VPC networks. So we can have one per network, even if they come from the same project. Um, we don't care about VPC networks at the moment. For this demo, we only care about the project. So I'm going to add the resource. So a project, which is the red project. And this is the resource we want to protect. We add that to the resources and now we can move on to the next one. So for step three, we have to define the services we want to restrict. So it's a good practice to restrict all the services and uh, um, then allow access through the ingress, but we're going to see this in, in a moment. So since we only have a, a bucket and we want to keep this simple, I'm going to simply add the storage API and I'm going to click here and go add, add to the list of restricted services. So now we have the Google Cloud Storage API as a restricted service. And um, let's move to the step four. The step four is VPC accessible services. The VPC accessible services are services that are accessible from a VPC when that specific VPC doesn't have internet access and we have enabled private Google access. What is private Google access? It's a mechanism in Google Cloud that allows VMs that live in a VPC without internet connection to communicate with the Google API. So when this is enabled, we want to, uh, we can still access the public endpoint of uh, the API through um, private Google access. And um, in, in this case, uh, we have the option to disable all the services. So for example, if we know that we have a machine that only communicates with uh, uh, PubSub, we can just enable that or um, same for storage and we disable everything else. So even from within the project, we can remove internet access and we can also remove the access to this uh, private Google access. We don't care about this for now because we, we are gonna operate from outside from my local machine. So um, we can keep all services enabled, so no services. So this is another optional thing, which is access level. So this is a policy that we can specify where we can define a list of rules for our organization. For example, we can define geographies, how you can allow access from a specific part of the world and, dis and uh, disable the access from other parts of the world. We're going to see this probably in another video. Uh, we are going to skip this for now and we'll keep it as optional. And then finally, we have what we really want to do. This is the ingress rule. The ingress rule, um, so in the VPC service perimeter, we have ingress and egress policies. 
uh, an ingress policy is defining an allow list for identities that live outside of the perimeter and want to access resources inside the perimeter. The egress policy is the opposite. So they don't necessarily look at the data moving um, across the perimeter, but is more about the direction of the request, if it's uh, coming from outside or from inside the perimeter. So now uh, let's try to create the first rule. So in the rule, what we have, we have a number of parameters to set. So let's start simple by allowing any identity. So what we can do here is we can specify any identity or any user account or any service account, or we can specify the identity. So we can have a specific user or a specific service account um, while listed and uh, granted access. So for now, we're gonna start simple with any identity and same for source. So in source, we can specify different types of sources um, we can start with the old sources uh, for now. Uh, I'll, I'll explain the others in a second. So now, what do we want to target? So the rule can be specific for resources inside the project. At the moment, we have one resource, which is our red project. So I can do all or I can show you that by selecting a project, we only can select the project that are already included in the perimeter. So the only one is this, so I'm gonna add this and done so now this is the project we want to grant access and we can here specify which services uh, will um, will be allowed for these identities so we can simply say all services are allowed or we can restrict to just storage let's go with all services uh, create the perimeter and this uh, should not have any impact for two reasons one, our perimeter is in dry run mode. And that means this is the config we created. So as you can see, all the data we inserted there is here. And the enforced perimeter doesn't have anything. So now we can try again our calls. And as we expect, nothing happened. So we can still access the resources from um, the other projects. Let's go back and let's try to enforce the perimeter. And we're going to give a bit of time to Google to um, and we can test this again. Obviously, as we said before, we don't expect this to be blocked and I'm testing this from red to blue, but we are only trying to block from blue to red. So this is still 100% fine. So now I'm going to explain how we can change this for blocking the calls. So let's go straight to ingress policy. So now what we are doing here is we are, allowing, we are allowing any identity and from any source. All sources means that we are allowing from anywhere in the world and from any GCP project. So now let's try to be a bit more strict. Uh, let's remove this and we go and specify projects. So we know that our identity comes from the blue project. So we're going to say we want this blue project to be allowed. We add the project, click done. So now we have the blue project. So the first time I configured this, I was expecting my test to pass and it didn't. I'll show you in a second what's, what's gonna happen and then I'll explain why. So now let's apply the change by enforcing it. So as you can see, it is quite a nice UI where you can see the differences uh, you can expect and uh, uh, maybe in another video I'll show you how you can expect the logs to see the changes applied in the dry run config. So now we can enforce this. We just need to wait a few seconds until uh, Google syncs with the, with the new config. And uh, if we switch back to our terminal, um, 
This should be blocked in a few seconds. As you can see now, this has been blocked. So as we can see now, we get the 403 and this request has been uh, blocked by an organization policy. Uh, we also have a VPC service control unique identifier. This is quite useful in, in uh, when you need to troubleshoot the, the config. So, but now let's go back to our config and let's explain why uh, this is not working. So the reason why it's not working is because it's true that the service account belongs to the project, but the call is not originated from a resource in the project, but is originated from my VM. So this means that now, even if you have a service account key, uh, you cannot you can define rules where that service account key is valid only inside the perimeter, so only from resources that you uh, specify. So in this case, we specify that the resource, any identity, uh, must be uh, working from the blue project and we are outside of the Google um, infrastructure we are on my local infrastructure and executing the call from there so this is disabling completely the um, permissions on the on that service account so this is just a simple example where I explain the basic concept of VPC service controls how to create a perimeter and how to protect the project under that perimeter in the next video we're going to see how to use Access Context Manager to allow um, users from a specific IPs to access the resources and what are the, the other possibilities with the service controls. And until then, um, feel free to ask questions in the comment below and uh, see you in the next video. Bye-bye.